Actually, you know what? I do believe it is time to abandon, to shed our robe. Let's go with Candorous. HK. It is time to finally shed our robes. I'm gonna lose so much. Actually, I didn't even lose that much defense. I did lose dexterity and strength though. So I lost a slight bit of damage, but not all that much. Let's just see. Designed for those who relish personal combat and know that power. Okay, so I can either look like this. Or like this. I like the blue look, to be honest. Okay, so what was I looking for? Oh right, that that guy. Hey buddy. Blah 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 blah. Show me what you have for sale. Wait, what? You don't have what I seek? What the hell kind of store are you? They don't have droid parts. Can you believe that? Oh, I know who has. I much preferred my armor. I hope she likes what? it. What? Okay, now let's say hi. Who the hell isn't moving? HK, okay. Hi, I brought you the tech land. You're back! I knew you'd come through for me! Here's the tech land. Take it. Come to Papa, you sweet simian organ! It may not look like much, but once I turn this into a bottle of Teresian ale, it'll end up being worth a fortune! Thanks, Mission. You won't regret helping me out with this. Please, Griff, let this be the last time. No more cons, no more scams, no more schemes. That's all I ask. Hey, sis, no need to worry about that. I've turned over a new leaf. From now on, I'm gonna stay out of trouble and do things right. And once we've cornered the market on Teresian Ale, good things will be heading my way. Then I'll make it up to your mission. Just wait, you'll see. You know, once we synthesize this and start brewing Teresian Ale in mass quantities, we're gonna be looking for some investors. You give me a couple of hundred credits, and I can get you in on the ground floor. You'll get a return of, oh, at least 20 times your investment. You already promised me a few thousand credits. Hey! Don't worry, you'll get your credits as soon as we start mass-producing that Teresian Ale. I just wanted to know if you were interested in an even bigger payoff. Now look, this is just a scam. But sure, why not? I have the money. Wise move. I can see you really understand how business works. Now when you see your chance, you jump in it, huh? That's my motto. I better get started on brewing that ale. Meet me back here later, and I'll have a down payment on what I owe you. No, he won't. Okay, so what does it say? Uh, to brew up a badge, however, the credits he promised you haven't materialized yet. He did say you could meet him later in the circus supply shop on that arena to collect the debt. Okay, so I'm gonna go back out, and afterwards I'm gonna go back in. As soon as I buy way more computer spikes. And parts. At least 50 of each need, need to be in my inventory at all times. That way I can do whatever the hell I want all the time. And get the maximum amount of experience out of it. Does that sound like a plan? Yes! See, even uh, uh, the spirits confirmed it. It was the force. I'm you, you idiot. Nope, it was the force. No, I'm you. The force. See, it shut up. <laughs> okay, you must probably think like I'm mentally crazy. Where the hell is HK? Is he even moving? Master? Yeah? What? No! Mission! What? No! 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 Sure he is. Let's go. Hi. Hello again. It is unfortunate, but I have nothing new in droids. Blah, blah. I am... Uh, lem what do you have in stock besides droids? Show me what you have. Computer spikes. Look at how much they cost. Holy hell. How many do I have? I don't know. I'm gonna buy like... 10. 20. 
20. And 30 of these. Okay, that's enough. How many do I have now? 50 and 50. Perfect, actually. Like I had calculated it all in my head. Okay, now let's return to the Evanhawk because it's closer, damn it. And let's uh, drop these guys, shall we? And go with these guys. Let's go. If you upgrade the right things though, you can get a very powerful weapon. Like, uh, I love how uh, Buddy Boy's weapon is more powerful than my lightsaber. Okay, is he here yet, or do I need to actually leave the planet? He's leaving. Are you kidding me, Griff? Leave already. There we go, he left. Now let's go back out and back in. If that's all it takes, is it? No, it's not. I actually need to go to a different planet. Well, shit. Turn to the Evan Hawk. Let's get back onto the Evan Hawk. Okay, now let's speak with Jolie again. Hi. Not something. You mentioned something about your wife before? I don't want to talk about that. I don't mean to pry, but... Oh, yes, you do. You may mean well enough, but my private affairs are just that. Private. Let me tell you something. Once you've lived as many years as I have, you'll have yourself a long, long list of memories. If you're lucky, most of them will be good. If you're not, some will be bad. If you're really unlucky, some will be so bad you never want to be reminded of them again, ever. You'll go far away, to a place that doesn't hold any memories at all. And there you'll be happy just to forget and be forgotten. Is that why you went to Kashyyyk? <laughs> Partly. Maybe. I doubt I could ever explain it to you fully, even if I wanted to. Let me ask you this. Have you ever been in love? Truly in love, I mean, and not simple infatuation. Well, no. Exactly. You're still at the beginning of your life. There will be women in your life. Perhaps many women. But if you're fortunate, you'll find love once. The Jedi, with their damnable sense of over-caution, would tell you love is something to avoid. Thankfully, anyone who's even partially alive knows that's not true. That's what I've always thought. Love doesn't lead to the dark side. Passion can lead to rage and fear, and can be controlled. But passion is not the same thing as love. Controlling your passions while being in love, that's what they should teach you to beware. But love itself will save you, not condemn you. Uh, listen to me go on as if I had all the answers. What do I know of love anymore? I'm just a lonely old man who's not even a Jedi. Not even a Jedi, you mean not anymore, right? Nope, never was. Technically, I never rose above the rank of Padawan for various reasons. Does that surprise you? You seem to have all, not the way you describe. You see, <laughs> you seem to have all the abilities of a Jedi. In my case, becoming a Jedi would have been a formality. I doubt the Order and I would have gotten along well, considering my opinions on things such as love. Love causes pain, certainly. Inevitably, love is going to lead to as much sorrow and regret as it does joy. I suppose there are perfect eternal loves out there, but I haven't seen any. And how do you deal with the bad part of love is what determines your character. What determines the dark side's hold over you. So what happened between you and your wife then? I haven't changed my mind. I'm still not going to talk about it. You go and find your own love if you want to know so badly. I'll tell you one thing. Sometimes, no matter how hard you try, you and the one you love simply aren't meant to be together. The trick is to know when that is. To know when it's time to fight and when it's time to part ways. 
There I go, waxing philosophical again. Somebody blast me already. Let's get going before I start talking in riddles, damn it. Alright, let's go. I'm just gonna take a quick hyperspace jump to... Tatooine or Dantooine, I don't know. Don't particularly care right now. Actually, let's go to Yavin. And let me guess, it will all tab out. Yep. God damn it, why does it do that? Okay, skibbity skip. 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 Let's talk to Jolie again. One last time, I suppose. Or not really one last time. He may have many more stories to tell, who knows. Hi. Got something. Why did you leave the Jedi? <laughs> who said I left the Jedi? Are you saying you're... You did. You said you weren't a Jedi any longer. Well, technically, I was only a Padawan. Not that that makes a difference to most, but as for the Order itself, no, I never left it. It left me. What do you mean by it left you? You know what I hate? Well, you know, lots of things, really, but I'm old and easily annoyed, but that's besides the point. What I really hate are how most people view the Jedi. Everyone thinks that the Jedi are perfect, that they can do no wrong, think the Jedi Council is completely incapable of injustice. I certainly don't think that. <laughs> I guess you aren't as stupid as you sometimes act. No doubt you've been on the receiving end of Jedi justice at least once, eh? And I'm not even talking about how some of us fall to the dark side. No, that's plenty indication of our fallibility. But it's something else entirely. No, I'm talking about how more than often not, your average robe-wearing Jedi can try to do the right thing and still be completely wrong. So, so the Jedi wronged you in some way, I take it? No, no, the Jedi always treated me well. It would be foolish and untrue to say otherwise. That's not what I meant anyway. Come to think of it, I don't have to be clear. Someone my age is entitled to ramble, damn it! But for your sake, I'll try to explain. I'll tell you a little tale about a Jedi Master I once knew. Hortaf, I think. Or was it Hortoff? Ah, I could never get it straight. Go on, I'll listen. Where was I then? Oh, oh yes, Master Hortaf. He was a kindly old Jedi who meant well. But the most nearsighted thing in the core, I swear. He would walk into walls, knock over tables, mistake apprentices for rancor beasts, that sort of thing. And he was too proud to submit to proper treatment. Some used to counsel him and urge to use the Force, Master Hordath. Allow the Force to see for you. But he refused to believe that his eyes were failing. He simply squinted more and more as the years went on. The other Jedi resignedly passing it off as the amusing quirk of a compassionate old man. Go on. So, one day a young Padawan meets Master Hordath in the courtyard and, not knowing of his blindness, asks him for directions to the council. Quite sure of himself, Hordath gave the lad directions, which happened to lead back outside and away from the Enclave. The Padawan is confused, naturally. He asks if Master Hordath is sure, and of course Master Hordath says that he is. The Padawan suggests that perhaps he should ask someone else. But the proud Hordath now feels insulted. He tells the Padawan to take the route he prescribed and no other. Rather dejectedly, the Padawan did as he was told, and so ended up leaving the Jedi Order forever. It was decided that the boy's fate was to leave the Order anyway, though whether that was out of respect for Hordath or because the boy went on to something else, we'll, we'll never know. You're the boy. So you knew this Master Hortat, or the Padawan? No, no, both of them were from before my time. What? Well before the Sith Wars, even. I don't understand. The tale is about blindness, and I thought the point was clear. At any rate, you think about it. You're the one who asked why the Jedi left me, remember? Now let's get going. My feet are itching for a good run. Yeah, sure, why not. Actually, let me see if those uh, Trend Oceans are back here on Yavin. So I would doubt that they are. What the hell? Firewall what? I'll check that out really soon. For now though, I still need to access this. Since the doors are still locked, damn it.
Unfortunately, I stopped wearing armor because of my Jedi powers now. I miss armor. Armor is nice to have. Okay, so they're not here yet. Wait, what? A Giska. Okay. Which means I can sell some of my stuff and get at least 10,000 credits back. Uh, let's see. These, sell 10 of them. Sell 10 of these. Uh, sell 6 of these. Sell all of these. Sell the fiber armor and Davik's war suit. And the double blade. And the mission's fiber blade. And Ordo's repeating blaster. And the blaster carbine. Keep the Mandalorian and have a pistol for now though. Take out the concussion grenades though, and the adhesive. Those we keep, those we do not. Sell that. Do I have... yeah, everybody does have this, I hope. I'll sell one. I believe that that's... oh right, the adrenals as well. And the droid plating stuff. I'm gonna keep the advanced stun ray, but the rest I'm selling. There we go, now I have 15,000 pedas again. Nice! Okay. Before we get too excited, however, let's remember we still have a grumpy jolly to contend with after we get back to Tatooine to check on uh, the progress of Griff, Mission's brother, who will most likely be driven out again and will be left without money again, but at least the mission will be finished. Let's go to the Ebon Hawk and beyond. a lot of money, way more money than I ever had before. So, Jolie, anything to say? Got something up. What do you know about the Sith? Actually, can you make a healing kit? How many could pass? Okay. Got something. Sith? Bad, bad men. Women too, to be fair. You must know more than that. Oh, indeed. They make a fine sandwich also. But don't tell the Jedi Council I said that. You're being elusive on past, but after things get rough. You're being elusive on purpose. <sighs> and just what gave you the impression that I know anything more about the Sith than you do? You did. You said you fought them. Oh, that's right. Damn the years of the young. I was expecting you to be your usual inattentive self when I mentioned that. So it's true, yes. I fought plenty of Sith. That was during the time of Exar Kun. Oh, 40 years ago now. Has it been that long? Who is Exar Kun? Uh, Exar was a Jedi who was corrupted by ghosts of the old Sith, or so they say. He attempted to conquer the Republic and create a new golden age of the Sith. And he was killed? Better to say he was defeated, but essentially yes. The victory did not come easily, however. Uh, so tell me what you know. What happened during the war with Exar Kun then? That is not a pleasant time to remember. After Exar Kun fell to the dark side, he attempted to recruit other Jedi to his cause. What surprised us, what took us completely unprepared, was how utterly successful he was. Many Jedi joined him and became Sith themselves. Why they did, I... I will never truly know, but they did. Battle broke out throughout the Order, pupil against the Master. We fought ourselves. That must have been difficult. Yes, more than difficult. Next to impossible. How do you fight against someone you love? Pah, I dislike such memories. It leaves a taste in the mouth that... Uh, it is a sadness I thought I'd put aside long ago. Ask me about the war some other time, just not now. I would prefer to be by myself for now. Oh, I know the perfect title for this part. The Ramblings of a Bindo. Yep, perfect. Let's go to Tatooine now. And hold up, it's gonna throw us out. Just... Oh shit! Fire! Uh, you can know when the fighters are coming by the music. It was a different music this time. 
Why am I still bothering with this guy? Okay, let that guy pass over and then shoot him. There we go. And we're out. Told ya. Okay, skippity skip skip. Skippity skip skip. Is it gonna throw us out again? No, thank god. Okay. You know, uh, a hull of a ship is not the best place for lightsaber practice, to be honest. Does Joey have anything else? Stupid fucking just got- Okay, sorry about that. Does Joey have anything else to add? Got something. You wanna talk about the war now? Not particularly. No time like the present? I suppose you're gonna nag me until I cough it up, aren't you? Nothing is private anymore, it looks like. <sighs> There's no escaping it, I guess. So be it. My wife's name was Nayama. She was the Yukatis enforcer who shot me out of the sky, if you remember. <laughs> Are you going to see that? <laughs> what does your wife have to do with the war? My wife had plenty to do with the war. Upon meeting her, I knew right away that she was strong in the force. That's why she was able to shoot me down. Nayama was a marvel of a woman. Fiery. Determined, smart. She dragged me to the capital and foiled three of my attempts to escape prison. Oh, and that body. The war? Well, yes, that. Needless to say, I eventually won her over. That was after I kidnapped her upon being broken out of the Yukata's prison, mind you. But, uh, that's another story entirely. At any rate, I wanted to train her in the Jedi way. The Council refused my request, naturally. I was still a Padawan at the time. I was an experienced Padawan, surely, but not yet ready to be a full Jedi, and certainly not ready to train another, especially not one so old as my wife. <laughs> and what did she think of all of this? Nayama was intrigued by the idea of becoming a Jedi. She liked the idea of power too much, perhaps, but I certainly didn't see that at the time. I believed in her and trained her in secret. I ignored her willful nature. I loved her too much to see fault in her. And she loved me too. I know she did. At the time, our love was a shared bliss. Better than anything I had known before or since. So what happened? Exar Kun is what happened. Niyama was inspired by Exar's promises of a new golden age. She wanted to join him. She came to me, pleading with me to throw aside what she called the decrepit trappings of the Jedi. To join her in Exar's war. What did you do? I pleaded with her to reconsider, to think about all that she was throwing away, to think about what she would become. She would have none of it. Finally, in frustration, she attacked me. She drew her lightsaber and attempted to strike me down. It was a scene being repeated everywhere throughout the galaxy. Pupil against master. In my case, it was a long and terrible battle, but I defeated her. You killed her? No, no. I had her at my mercy. Disarmed and defenseless. She looked up at me and she knew. She knew I couldn't do it. I don't think I could have either. But I should have. Sometimes I convince myself otherwise, but it's no use. She had fallen to the dark side when she raised her saber against me, and I let her go. To my shame, she went on to kill many Jedi during the war, until she herself was slain in the final battle. I grieved for her death. Inevitable as it was, even as the Jedi Council put me on trial for my actions once the war was over. They put you on trial? I had trained Nayama against their wishes. I had failed to kill her when I had the chance, and she went on to kill others. Not to mention that I had remained a Padawan throughout the war. A formality, perhaps, but with the trial, it had to be decided if I was worthy to become a Jedi at all. It was a travesty, of course. I told you that even the Jedi were capable of great injustices, didn't I? I can't believe they tried you for that. But I deserve to be tried. They found me innocent. Even though I deserved every punishment and more, they let me go. Mitigating circumstances, they said. I deserved compassion, they said. They said I had learned wisdom the hard way. For all I had done during the war, they wished to raise me to full Jedi status at long last. That, that was when the Jedi left me. That was when they failed me. 
I don't understand. No, maybe you don't at that. They may have been able to forgive me. I could never forgive myself. And you still believe love is worth the risk? I... yes. I do, I suppose. Does that surprise you? Uh, it is all so long ago. Lost in the winds, I suppose. Nobody cares what an old man believes anymore, do they? Let's continue on with the task at hand. I would prefer to think of the present today.